All right, and we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Global Citizens. My name is Kelvin. I am the show's host, and of course, I am also its creator. So if you guys remember, some time back, I actually was featured by Cult in Cultures Magazine, and there was a, a good-looking gentleman who is at the cover of it. So I have the privilege of inviting him here today. So my guest for today is an actor and filmmaker. His name is James Tang. So a rarity in the filmmaking industry is James is an on-screen performer who outwardly claims his, his status as a third culture kid. And he is actually culturally born in a culturally Chinese family in the USA while growing up mostly in Thailand and enrolled in an international school. So James has made appearances in hit television shows such as NCIS Los Angeles and Brooklyn 99, along with appearances in award-winning web series such as Black Girl in a Big Dress and short films such as Bad Fish and in an upcoming appearances on Puppy Place on Apple TV and along with other voice acting roles. And if you have seen him on his own Instagram, you will see his a lot of his thirst trap by using Kronk's voice. So without further ado, I'll pass the spotlight back to James. How are you, my friend? I'm good. You did a lot of research. Hey, I do my homework. It's what Asian <laughs> kids do. We have to do our yeah. homework. All right. Uh, all right. Without further ado, uh, I'm just going to jump into the very first question. So yes, James, uh, I'm so sorry about this. It's been a this question is always a 50-50. Uh, some TCKs like it, some of us hate it. So please define home to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, home is often, I feel like, yeah, home is such like a, as a physical place, home is Bangkok, I'd say, because it's the city I grew up in and I'm most familiar with, but even going back to visit, it's like, oh man, there's still there's so many things that are so different now that I'm not used to, um, that I just missed while living away from it. Um, and it's funny, my mom actually once said, like, isn't home just where your family is? And I was like, yeah. I guess, but like, we've even my just if it's just my parents, like they've lived in so many different homes in even just five years. In the last five years, they lived in like three different homes, four different homes. So like, even that alone is just like, it kind of is, but not really. Um, it always feels home-like, you know, and safe and comfortable if it's like, oh, my parents like kind of home base, but it doesn't feel like a home home that I grew up in or anything. Right, right. No, I think uh, I get it. I get it. Uh, I mean, well, this is this show is created to advocate TCK. So that kind of thing is something that we all feel most familiar to because even just stepping into something that we thought we knew it's like okay, okay this feels a lot different than what i remembered okay so kudos to those who are still having issue with those home so <laughs> for those of you who is watching this for the very first time global citizens is a weekly live stream that invited tck's and global citizens of all profiles the main purpose of it is advocacy and actually and actually education to actually let people know that this global life is not an extended holiday. It's not because you settle in a favorite tourist location spot that that is something that we enjoy every day. Because a lot of time we have to change who we are, how we speak, and even sometimes our expectation and reality because this is something that is just not possible due to certain environment settings. So I hope people are a lot more aware of it. And with that, I'm actually passing the spotlight back to James. All right. So James, what do you feel though has been your blessing as a TCK? And just to balance it up, what do you think has been considered a curse of being one? I mean, the blessing is definitely being able to like, at least for me, just make friends anywhere with anyone, um, or at least just have an understanding of where someone might be coming from. Um, better empathy right. and stuff like yeah like i i feel like i have a very open mind and it's the, the ability to adapt to change is pretty simple at this point you know having moved around so much in my life um but i guess the the drawback to that is having moved around so much that it's like there isn't really one place that i would call home um you know it's easy to make connections with people but sometimes having that deeper understanding 
of having had this kind of background and lifestyle is rarer because it's such a rarer um, lifestyle to come across. And so, yeah, double-edged sword. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just I think I've, only, I've had the luck of just only needing to settle within two places, which is Indonesia and wow. Singapore. So maybe I... I have the typical of, hey, I don't feel I belong here. I don't feel I belong there. But at least it's definitely not as in comparison to some of the people who are maybe such as yourself, who has spent time with a lot more places, I guess. But I think at the same time, we draw the positive and negative from there because it shapes our character. And I know it helps TCK to actually be a lot more mature, right? In comparison, mm -hmm. I guess, to compare to your peers. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, yeah, it was always a thing like going to college and stuff that we kind of talk about and laugh when we came back home. And it's just like, you know, even just like something like drinking alcohol or something. It seems to be something that happens probably like more readily in like countries where it's a lot more lax or something versus like coming to the US and stuff like the drinking age is 21. And people still get around to that. But it's like it felt like it took them longer to kind of get used to that because it wasn't quite as necessarily available. Really? 21? So NBA mm -hmm. contracts allow players like my, my 20 years old to earn a million dollar checks and they can only drink in 21. Wow. Legally, yeah. Logic. Yeah. Legal, logic. All right. All right, James. Uh, earlier you mentioned on empathy and adaptability, right? So mm -hmm. uh, what makes you pursue acting though and how does this adaptability helps it to be translated on a silver screen mm. I and mean, i pursued acting originally just as a way to try to improve my directing as i went to film school and i started as a filmmaker but then now i realize it's kind of something i've always wanted to do as a kid um growing up around films um and seeing you know just different adventures and all these like cool worlds and experiences that people are just in these stories and that people were involved in. It's something that I've always wanted to be a part of and just never opened myself up to it, partially because of a lack of representation. And yeah, so like pursuing it now, I also feel that I have a responsibility to be part of that representation because yeah, there's just not that many of us, at least in Hollywood, you know, that's trying to come up. So it's yeah, it's kind of my responsibility now, but yeah, I mean, in terms of using, you know, being a TCK and, and all this adaptability and, and being open to change and stuff really helps me understand characters quite easily and not judge them. You know, one of the biggest uh, mistakes an actor can make is to judge their character because then that makes someone still they're outside of that character looking in. But it's like, if you can just understand what someone is going through or why they're doing it, in a, at least a human way, then it, it just makes for a better actor. Okay, earlier, okay, I'm glad you mentioned on representation. So I've invited Elizabeth Liang before, who is actually a Brooklyn 99 alumna herself. Cool. So yeah, I've had at least four filmmakers. So that's fine. Okay, uh, all right though. So earlier you mentioned on representation. Do you ever encounter issue when your ethnicity come into the attention of a casting director? Because in, when Elizabeth was younger, what she likes to do is because she's half she's half Latina and half Chinese, she actually used that to her advantage. Because if they look for uh, Latina, then of course she can just came up that hey, I'm half I'm half, I'm half Hispanic, or if I need on a rare occasion, she says that there is a Chinese casting then she claims she can say that she's one. Uh, what Have you ever encountered an issue with this though? Yeah, certainly. Um, it's it's rare that it's very overt in that they make the decisions to reach out to people you know, beforehand and internally. So it's like, we don't usually get exposed to like too many, I guess, overt things, but like, you know, being, I'm, I'm, you know, mostly 
Chinese, but I have a bit of Thai as well. So that kind of lends to a bit of like non-traditional looking, like just looks um, in my appearance. And so I feel like there's, yeah, there's certain things that were, you know, people like other friends might have gotten an audition, but it's like, oh, I didn't get an audition. Um, but that's also, I mean, getting to win the within the last few years of actually them even casting Asian people or even looking and considering Asian people. Um, you know, everything right now, at least in like the Asian American community in Hollywood is kind of like the pre and post Crazy Rich Asians um, timeline because Crazy Rich Asians, its success really did help so much with the industry um, and for people to start being more open to actually casting, you know, Asian people in things and more things that aren't specifically written as needing an Asian person. Um, so yeah, like, but, but, you know, to bring that back to representation, it's kind of important because casting directors and associates and assistants, they're all people too. And so by having more representation that allows them as people to see like, Oh, actually, you know what, why not? You know, why can't this be a thing? You know? And so, it's 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 a it's like a small snowball effect, you know, and it's really about hoping and trying to get the people to take the risks to begin with. Like, luckily, WB did take the risk on Crazy Rich Asians to show that hey, this is something that's viable because in the end, we are all human. Okay, uh, okay. Regard when you mentioned Crazy Rich Asian, uh, okay, I mean. I'm proud about that too, but I'm not too fond about that because a girl I like is actually a big fan of Henry Golding. So that's not, that's not my real house. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, I actually want to ask another area. I, it's actually, it's also something that pertains to representation though. What do you think has been the, will be the impact of Shang-Chi and the 10 and the legend of the 10 rings? I've watched mm -hmm. the movie three times by now. I finally yes. managed to watch it in cinema is because our our cinema didn't open until recently due to lockdown sure, right. uh what do you think has been the impact because i also see that you're actually at the premiere with the sudarso brothers mm -hmm. yeah um i mean shang chi luckily as a film it's like it's good it's fun it's a great time you know it's got action it's got comedy it's got heart it's got family values and stuff and it's well made and it's fun and it's it's also making money um it's it's i mean it's doing good for pandemic times uh, obviously we need to make that differentiation um and you know for better or worse people use the excuse that oh hollywood only thinks about money and yeah in some ways it is true and so it's like it's now been proven that shang chi has made money and can make money and so that's similar to crazy rich Asians. it's kind of like it starts opening more gates and more potential opportunities for people for investors to just be like, oh, you know what, that uh, Shang Chi movie that 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 had Asian, Asians in it. Why don't we Why don't we invest in this because it has Asians in it? You know, Unvo as as ridiculously simplified that sounds like sometimes that is the case. And so, luckily, it's by setting that precedent um, that it helps and can potentially lead to more things. So, it's it's a snowball effect again. So hopefully, it just keeps you know getting bigger and better as time goes on yep love that love that love that i actually will have a final question on that that's going to piggyback on the snowball effect that you mentioned but i'm going to focus on you back again yeah sure. so i know that you discovered the term tck when you were reading the bible dr roots bible and mm -hmm. the polar fathers and son duos so what has been the significance of by outwardly claiming you are a TCK within the filmmaking industry when you actually put it in your resume or cast list and does the, does the people who is looking at it is like, what is this TCK thing that you, are, that you put inside your stuff? Mm -hmm. um, I don't put it in my resume because it's not really a special skill. <laughs> um, it's uh -oh. honestly not something people really know about. And when it comes to acting, it, it doesn't matter. You know, as an actor, it's just like you either give a good performance or you are a famous person or have done stuff in the past. Like those are really kind of the only things that'll help you get cast in something. Um, it'll be helpful once you get it, then 
like if the filmmakers are like, oh, I'm a TCK too. You're a TCK. Oh, perfect. This is why it works and you get this character. Um, but that's rare too because it's like I've I haven't really run into too many projects where they're they've written a TCK type character. Um but yeah, once in a while when I do run into people, you know, on Twitter or whatever, you know, online, it's it's a cool connection point because then it does help us have that immediate connection. Be oh, you're TCK too. Oh, awesome, amazing. This is great. We have this kind of shared um background. Uh, we also have the shared background. trauma. We also have the shared yeah. trauma and depression. Sure, yeah, depending on you know what experience they kind of had with it, but yeah like i feel like that's it's it's better maybe for networking and stuff but it doesn't necessarily lend to like you know casting being like oh wow this is a tck of course you know like maybe if and when they write some more people write like a very specifically tck role and they really need someone that embodies it then sure but like for me it's really just been more of like a kind of networking tool fair enough fair enough there was an attempt actually during the earliest days of pandemic i think it was done in hbo max at that time to show tck but the thing is is that they tend to only focus on the military kids and the missionary kids which mm -hmm. is is the, the most traditional form of tck but the thing is of course the term has expanded so much that that's barely encapsulate anything though uh right. what's your experience the what do you feel though is something that makes it such a resistant to change the perspective, the point of view, to embrace the more diverse and the more the larger form of the community? Uh, you mean just within Hollywood and like yeah. diverse projects yeah, as a whole? Yep. I mean, to go back to the whole Hollywood money situation, it's it's usually just you know Hollywood's a business, and if if it's a business of art and business and art are kind of two clashing perspectives in that to make good art, you have to take risks, but to make good money, you can't take that many risks. So it's this weird struggle between risk, risk taking. And I think, you know, it's easier to make something with pre-established names, which tend to not be diverse people because of the history of Hollywood. And so, it's really just, you know, a mixture of this kind of being a business situation where people don't want to take risks as well as some systemic things. And within the, the lack of representation leading to people that, um, like, let's say just speci speaking specifically of like the Asian American experience, because there's like a lack of representation there's this kind of subconscious effect of people being like, Oh, then like, why would you even want to pursue this career when there's so little out there as well as the fact that, you know, immigrant culture is just like, we came to this country, not so you could go and be an actor and struggle and starve, but so that you can make a great life for yourself and for us. And so, yeah, it's just kind of just giant cycle of like self-perpetuation culturally, I'd say that that leads to that. But, Luckily now, you know, there's, there's people kind of breaking through and there's changes happening and like people moving their way up within the system so that we can actually see many more stories from many different storytellers. Okay, I'm guessing that was, that could have been a conversation that you had with your parents when you first tell them that I'm going to pursue acting. Luckily, no, in that my parents are very non-traditional in that sense. Uh, they technically are also TCKs in their own right, which is really cool. Um, oh, that's lucky. That's really lucky. Yeah, yeah. And it's luckily it comes down to like my parents really are just like, we want you to be happy and not starve. And so like my dad is kind of a serial entrepreneur. So he's always, you know, jumping between businesses and like coming up with new ideas and stuff. And so he's pushing, always pushing me to, to do that just to make sure I'm not pursuing one career that basically is, is reliant on other people's decisions. Um, and whereas my mom is just like, she, she gets that it's a struggle and she's like, this is, you know, this is like, this is what you, you want to do and it makes you happy. And you know, she's, so she sends me good vibes all the time, but it's similar to my dad. It's just like, 
But, you know, think about maybe other options that you can have on the side, at least, just so that you don't end up, like, just being stuck in, like, the doldrums of, of, of poverty. Not, like, poverty, poverty, but, like, you know, just not being able to, like, just... You just feed yourself, yeah. yeah. Yeah, starving. I keep saying starving, but, like, yeah, starving artists, basically. <laughs> okay, yep. Why, did, why does every single one of the art-related content that I've created somehow will have this. Yep. Mm. Okay. I mean, parents are just being parents. That's, that's mm. fair enough. That's fair enough. Mm. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. Uh, like, may I know how many countries though have you moved? Because I know that mostly Thailand has been your main area and uh, main mm. your main home. But the thing is, is I know you've moved several places though. Uh, do you feel that each of the move to a new country feels like a griefing stage? And do you feel that it has helped help push your maturity to to a new level or anything that do you feel has it impacted you? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like I, I living wise, I've been I lived in four different countries: uh, Canada, Australia, Thailand, and the U.S. and I feel like, yeah, as, as time went on and stuff there, there, i never, I can't say I ever had a truly, a true grieving stage, but I, you know, I had like homesickness and stuff and then certain ones. Um, but I don't know, because I think I'm just so used to travel and moving around like every summer, like in at least elementary and middle school and stuff, like we'd come to the States, you know, so just kind of constantly bouncing around and having people knowing people kind of like all over the world and stuff has always been something that I'm used to. Um, but yeah, I think moving around because I guess because it's for college and it's just like, this is just what I'm doing. I'm just, just took it day by day and faced it, you know, but yeah, once in a while I'd get hit with homesickness. Um, but yeah, like the last time I truly felt homesick has been, been years and years ago. So maybe I'm just numb to it now. I don't know. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's just like, it just helps me be able to like think on my feet and like just be able to adapt and kind of overcome and wherever I am. Yeah, that's a positive mindset. That's a positive mindset. The thing is, is that I think is that sometimes we all tend to be romanticized like one of our homes compared to the other. It's because that's where we are most most used to then after that when you take that environment away from us it became like it makes our world turn upside down and stuff so i think that's like the mindset that you adapted is something worth emulating is there any other advice though that you would like to give though for tck's who are or who are maybe younger than yeah we are than our generations now for sure i think you know sometimes it is it Sometimes it really just comes down to time. You know, it's like a breakup. Like sometimes the only thing you can do to let the feelings subside is to let them run their course and allow the time to pass. Um, but I think, you know, other things that might help are, are that like, one thing that helped me, I guess, I guess kind of come to terms is, or just really feel things out and, and get a better grasp and accept things is that like people, are always going to be there you know of course you know there are there are black swan events like you know deaths and stuff which which are not good or just you just have friends that end up showing their true colors and their true colors aren't so good so that's that's never fun um but in the end you know people are gonna just be there and so even though we're far apart and whatever they're they're out there they're living lives they're always kind of gonna be there and if they are not good at communicating you know by you know messaging or whatever then that's not always your own fault you know that's that's sometimes just how they are of having different standards of communication and using say social media or something and i think it really is just about just having the ability to make new friends and stuff is just about just adapting and finding more people to connect with and stuff because there are so many people in the world and there's so many different things that people like and dislike and personalities and whatnot, you know, that it's just, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is, I guess. Yeah. Acceptance I think is, yeah, probably one of the, the 
best things to try to get to. Right. All right, James. Uh, I have three. I have two final questions, and mm-hmm. one of them is actually just something that I want to. I've been doing to wrap up the show. So, which current projects that you have done, whether in any of the past roles that you've done, is personally close to your heart, mm-hmm. and if I'm putting you in the driver's seat, you can create a character or a show or a movie to to show your insights of your life as a TCK. What would it be? Mm. So it's a two part. Sorry. Right. I mean, the character I feel like that's hits closest to home is I wrote a short film called That Fish and put myself in it because I just oh, yeah, I watched that. wrote myself. I watched that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I want to ask this. I want to ask this. How does it feel when that fake blood was spilled on your face? How does that feel like? It was wonderful. It was the best experience of my life. It was really cold that, that, that it was like February that year. And it was, it was pretty cold. And so it was just like, we were just like, all right, we got to do this. We have one chance. Let's give it a shot. Uh, luckily I managed, we actually did get it in two, two tries because the first try it like kind of messed up, but we were able, able to just, you know, just not get it on anything. And it was like, okay, it worked out. Let's try it again, reset, make sure everything's okay. And then just blasted it. And um, no, it was freaking cold. It was kind of terrible, <laughs> but we got through it. It looks great. So I'm happy with that. Um, but, but yeah, I wrote the character. Fish. Oh, it's, that? oh, okay, okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, why bad fish is like something that's so personal to you though. Is it because you wrote it or? Yeah, I mean, I wrote the character for myself, you know, so it's just, and I think the fact that, you know, I was essentially executive producer on it as well and and helped edit it, you know, this is just kind of like, kind of one of the projects where I threw together my filmmaking and acting skills, truly threw them all together. And it's something I'm quite proud of. So I'd say that's, that's why I'm, it's, it's so personal. Um, As for, yeah, I guess. You know, creating a project that can show the world what it's like, I guess, about TCK is um, I probably want to make something involving just, yeah, like the neighborhood and school that I went to. You know, I'd just probably be like a similar show to like 1015 or some sort of high school show or something and just but show, you know, what it's like to live with international students at going to school with international students but also live like nearby and around basically my like a show about my childhood or something um some point down the line oh that would be a good idea i mean like high school high school setting is easily the most relatable because we all yeah. went through phases of that so that would be an interesting thing yeah huh. i think okay, the, the okay. challenge would really just be to find a giant cast of like basically TCKs and filmmakers and stuff. I think that's, it's going to have to, it's going to be a long project in the running. Uh, if you ever need people who, if you ever need TCKs who to be casted, uh, you can go to my page and you can go to some of my contacts pages. They're all there. Uh, I'm actually going to give a little shout out to my friend Kelly, who actually just got out of a quarantine in Singapore because uh, since James mentioned on on finding TCK casting, uh, her pages have her pages regularly featured TCKs, the life of TCKs and their stories. So that's actually something worth checking out if you're ever interested, James. Sounds good. All right. Okay. I'm just gonna conclude this with uh, with gratitude. I guess I just want to ask, what do you Feel that has been yet you are most grateful for, for either in your career or in your life at the moment or hope you hope to accomplish i mean i'm i'm super grateful that i guess you know the pandemic though it has like affected you know the industry and everything like on a personal level i'm very very lucky and grateful that it didn't affect me directly in, in, in such that like, I haven't gotten COVID, you know, I don't know people that have like died from COVID. Like, so I'm very, very grateful for that. I'm grateful that people haven't been directly harmed, you know, in any of these attacks or anything. Um, I'm grateful that I am, I am still getting auditions, 
you know, that I'm, I'm still able to put myself out there within this industry. Um, even though there's things that are, you know, kind of still on hold and stuff. Um, and it also, that also makes me hopeful, you know, for, you know, what is coming and even the stuff that I have done throughout the year that maybe hasn't gotten into booking a role or something that could, that could still potentially lead to other things, um, in the future. Um, and yeah, just, you know, just got to keep, keep pushing and grinding. Got it. All right. Uh, I'm actually just going to conclude this uh, by thanking those who already who will be watching this or who are watching this at the moment. So first off, I want to thank Pratna and Miss Grace Morelos. So both of them actually, both of them actually follow James work and they really wanted to watch, but due to the different time zones, they well, they'll be watching it a little bit later, either on my Facebook or on my Instagram. And last but definitely not least is Myra, since Myra was the one who actually interviewed both of us in Cultures Hi, Magazine. Myra. And Tony, I think, uh, I'm not sure if he's watching now, but Mr. Tony Pietra Arjuna, who is actually one of my alumna, he is currently in Malaysia. And my, my editor should be watching this soon since he has to watch it since he has to do his work. So with that, uh, that's going to be the end of episode 104 of Global Citizens. Uh, last but definitely not least, I just want to thank James. Uh, anything else you want to add on, James? Um, stay healthy out there. Drink water. Do some stretches. Call somebody you love and tell them you love them. That's a really good advice, actually. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. So thank you for all those who are watching this right now and we will be watching it later. So that's the end of Global Citizens, episode 104, conversation with a transnational filmmaker. See you guys.